Lord be with you. Also with you. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to our Savior Lutheran Church. It's, uh, it's good to gather together this evening on this holy day of Ash Wednesday where we come here and we begin our journey in Lenten uh, tied to the cross of Calvary. Uh, for 40 days we'll walk this path and we'll, we'll end up uh, at Good Friday at the cross and of course away the joy of Easter morning. If you're visiting us tonight, we're glad to have you here. If you're tuning in online, it's good to be with you in that way as well. We hope you are uh, staying warm, doing well, and are able to, to kind of have this time of uh, reflection, repentance, and, uh, and preparation for the season of life to come. I'm Pastor Caleb Wade. This is Pastor Keith Piotr, and we're glad to have you here. Uh, doing during these midweek services, we're going to be doing this a sermon series that kind of continues on from our Advent sermon series where we are looking at the hymns of Lent. And tonight, our hymn that we will be reflecting on is Savior, When in Dust to Be. And so tonight, just a few procedural things as we have the imposition of ashes as well as Holy Communion. Uh, we're going to do it the same way we do it on a Sunday morning. We'll have this side coming up first, followed by this side. And as you come forward, you will first receive your ashes in the middle from myself, and then you'll come, come on whatever side you are to go on and receive communion as well. Uh, if you are uh, not wanting the ashes and it makes you uncomfortable for any reason, just kind of you know, cross yourself, tell me to not touch you wherever you want. Uh, however you want to keep me from touching you, that's fine. Uh, we understand. Uh, you can receive the ashes on your forehead or on the back of your hand as well. And if you want that, just hold your hand up and that's what we'll do. Uh, so further, uh, other than that, we will uh, ask you to please keep your masks on as you go by the elements. Uh, just a reminder that uh, we'd ask that, that you wouldn't wait to take them off until you've gotten both bread and wine and have gotten past the trays, just to keep everything uh, from uh, getting contaminated by my breath or whatever. Uh, at this time, I invite you to please stand for our opening response. Tonight, we begin our Lenten journey toward the cross. We follow Jesus through the wilderness. We remember the words of love Jesus spoke. We remember our mortality. We remember God's mercy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be saved.
first reading for this Ash Wednesday coming from the first book, the Old Testament, Genesis, the first 12 verses of chapter 4. Adam lay with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother, Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door, it desires to have you, but you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. The word of our Lord. You may see that our second reading uh, does come from the Gospel of, of St. John at the 11th chapter portion of that powerful story of the raising of Lazarus. And after she, that is Martha, had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? The Gospel of our Lord.
again in dust to thee, lo, we bow the abending knee. When repentant to the skies, scarce we lift our weeping eyes, O oh, by all thy pains and woes, suffer once for us below. Bending from thy throne on high, hear our penitential cry. Death. Death is all around us. And this is more obvious than ever, and it has become a very prevalent part of our society, more so than in past years. Death has been forced in front of our very eyes as we taste the food that we eat at breakfast. We are forced to taste death as we view the news and the reports of all of those who are dying. Death. Death has been thrust into our very reality. Death has made a return to the forefront of our minds as we now have the obligation to look at its smug face. And death, death has become far more pervasive today as of late, and we are reminded that even though we have made amazing scientific advancements and we have made amazing medical leaps and bounds, tonight, we are reminded that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. See, tonight, on this Ash Wednesday, we are forced to acknowledge that we have a death problem. And I must tell you, you will die. And so tonight, we face this reality. We face death in all of its terror, and in all of its calamity, and all of its horror. And we reflect on death and how it haunts us, and how it, how it, how it lurks behind us, how it stops us. And tonight, we sing about death. Tonight, we, we reflect on this, this hymn. That, that focuses on, on, on dust. It focuses on, on weeping and on mourning and on tears and on grief. It focuses on our cries. But what do we cry? What does God hear? What do we say? See, when we're faced with death, and no matter how we are wired, we, we all share a common response. And it looks different for everyone, but when we are faced with death, we, we all feel some kind of sorrow. We all feel grief. We all mourn. We, we all eventually cry, and, and a lot of us will weep. Because death brings with it this, this overwhelming shroud of darkness that encapsulates everything around us. And we feel it not only in the physical void that it leaves, that, that void that, that is seen in an empty chair at a table that was once full, or, or the void of, of a phone that keeps ringing and no one is around to answer, or the void of a letter that was sent and will remain unopened. But we feel it inside of us as well. Because death is a thief. Death is a thief that, that takes from us, not only physically, but it takes from us spiritually and emotionally, and we all need to acknowledge that at some point we will die. And I think we all know this. I think we can all admit that we know we will one day die, but, but when we come face to face with death, it leaves us in shambles. And it's there, when we look death in the eye, that we find ourselves left with weeping eyes. 
eyes that are that are puffy and swollen, eyes that are that are bloodshot and red, eyes that, that have shed tears, that have left our cheeks stained and wet as, as death draws out our weeping and our cries. But what do we cry? What does God hear? What do we say? See, there were two brothers. Uh, brothers who, who both had various jobs. One was one who tended the flocks of cattle and, and those goats and all of those things that he had been given. The other one was, was sent to tend to the fields and to the crops. And both of them, both of them worked hard at their job and their craft, and they worked diligently in the tasks that they had been given. And as part of their religion, they would offer sacrifices by taking the be very best and the first from both of their bounties, their best animals and their best crop. Yet one's offering was far more pleasing to God. The one who raised the cattle was looked on with favor as God smiled at the aroma of his sacrifice, while the one who worked the ground was not given his blessing. And of course, maybe you've been in this position. This stirred up jealousy in one of the brothers' hearts. And this jealousy led to hatred, and this hatred led to a brother turning against brother, and this led to a brother taking a rock which meant skull, and skull that dripped blood, and blood that sank into the dust of the ground. And it cried out. And God heard this blood cry. What does it cry? What does God hear? What does this blood say? See, Lent marks the time where we begin to walk the road of the cross to Calvary. It is a time where, where we are, are kind of coming to worship, to, to repent from our sin and all of the things we have done. And so we come here tonight and we will receive the, the ashes on our foreheads and the sign of the cross. And we come here beaten, worn, tired, and bloody, if not physically, then spiritually. And we are exhausted. We are exhausted from, from the daily grind of work and life. We are exhausted from the, the sins that burden us, those, those sins that you have sworn you would not commit again, and yet you cannot shake it. And we come and we begin this season by bearing the dust that we have come from visibly on our faces. And it serves as a reminder to you that you will die. It serves as a reminder that one day dust will not just cover a small patch on your forehead, but it will cover your entire body in the ground. See, this Lent, it's a season for us to weep. It's a season for us to cry out to God, but what, what do we cry? What does God hear? What do we say? We, we know that we are dead in sin. We know that we cannot save ourselves. We know that we are all mortal, and we know that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. But what do we cry? Well, we just sang. We raise a penitential cry. We, we cry out in our weeping and our grieving, God, forgive us, me, a poor, miserable sinner. And we walk a road. We walk a road for, for 40 days that will lead us to the cross where Christ bears our sins and pays the price on the cross. And then we walk a road that leads us to this culmination. We walk the road where, where at the end we kneel and we lift up our weeping eyes and it's there on Friday. 
Friday when, when three men walked through the streets up onto a hill. Our, our eyes looked upon them as they carried death on their backs, as, as women watched them walk by. They knelt on the ground, they looked up with their eyes, and they cried out. And I kind of wonder, what do they cry? What did God hear? What did they say? And it was there that, that when these men made it to their goal on that hill, that they were nailed to their rugged crosses, and as nails pierced their flesh and went between their bones, they cried out, and I wonder what they cried. What did all of those there that day hear? What did they say? And then there, there, one man speaks. And one has the strength and has the ability to, to get breath out of his lungs. And through these labored breaths and through the cries of agony, he, he looks at all of the ones who killed him, the ones who found him guilty, the ones who nailed him to the cross, and he cries out. What did he cry? What does God hear? What does he say? Well, here we know. Here we know that, that Jesus from the cross looks at all of those in front of him, all of those who have killed him, all of those who found him guilty, all of those who nailed him to the cross. He lifts a penitential cry. But it isn't for him. It, it isn't a cry that speaks for himself. No, it's a cry that speaks for all of those who are taking in the scene. It is a cry that asks for forgiveness. It is, it is their penitential cry. And this is what Jesus says. He cries, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Christ repents for them. Yet Christ did not only cry out with his voice there at Calvary. No, Christ cried out in the silence as he took breaths. And Christ cried out with, with blood dripping from wrists, blood that dripped from his holy veins into the dust. And just imagine Imagine that if God heard the blood of Abel crying out from the, from the ground in Genesis, imagine how loud Christ's blood cried out from the cross. As he looked death in the eye. Yet, this wasn't the only time Jesus went face to face with death. This is the only time he looked death in the eye. Earlier in Jesus' life, before this moment when he gave up his life for all people, Jesus saw death. See, Jesus had a, a good friend. Yeah, probably one of his best friends, based on how he responds. But Jesus had a friend, and his name was Lazarus. And Lazarus got sick, Lazarus was ill, and, and eventually Lazarus died, and he was put in the grave, and he was laid to rest in the dust. And Christ was not above grief. Christ was not the guy who, who stood off in the corner of the room, acting tough, refusing to mourn, although, although he knows how this ends. And even though Jesus knows the ending, even though Jesus knows he is the resurrection, even though Jesus knows he will be victorious, we see the reality of death drip from the eyes of God as his eyes run with tears. So Jesus does not ignore death. No, Jesus acknowledges its robbery, its severity, its horror, and its offense. Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, 
mourns the death of his friend and he weeps. He weeps. Oh, but Jesus, with his weeping eyes, his, his eyes puffy and swollen, his eyes bloodshot and red, his, his cheeks wet and stained with tears, draws out one weeping cry. But what, but what does Jesus cry? What does God hear? What does he say? Jesus, in his weeping cry, says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus, laying there dead, rises. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We sing.
broke and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with each of you all. Thank you. Do you feel comfortable to share that peace with one another and across the few?
makes us whiter than snow through the blood of Christ. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority as your pastor, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God has removed our sin as far as the east is from the west. Stand, shall we? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.